Welcome to this presentation of Burst, a BI and analytics system that was born in the cloud and gives you and your users the power to visualize your information in powerful representations and dashboards. Let's get going. I'll log into the Burst environment, and the first thing you'll notice on the far left are the projects that I've created or the spaces that I've created of data representations. We're going to start off by creating a brand new space. We're going to do a sales analysis dashboard for your users today. So we'll create a new space called sales analysis. And this allows us to then connect to your data. There are several native connections you can see here, such as a connection directly to salesforce.com, or connect directly to SQL databases using a SQL agent that we would place on your database server. For our purposes today, I've got prepared data that we're going to pull in from spreadsheets. Just drag and drop those spreadsheets into this square, and the system brings up all the data associated with those spreadsheets for you. You can now see we've got spreadsheets for customer order lines, customer orders, and customers. Had I connected directly to the database, you would see the database tables here that you could select from. Looking at this, I like what I see. I'm going to say I'm done. And I'm going to make sure that I select all those uploaded files. And then import my data. And we are done. The next step is to prepare my data. What do I want the users to see? How would I like that represented? Are there additional data columns I'd like to calculate that were not in my initial data? Let's create user-friendly versions of these files. First, we have our order lines. Then we have the order headers themselves. And then we have the customers. You are essentially building a user-friendly catalog using names that the users can recognize rather than the database source names. You would then hide the sources that you don't want the users to see as we've created links or copies of those sources in the user-friendly files. Then we look at the fact that in our order lines file, we have our extended price and our extended cost, but we don't have a margin coming from our data source. So we'd like to add a column so our users can see the profitability of these customer orders. So we're going to click the Add Step button, and this exposes for us a list of activities we can perform against the data. In this case, we're going to add a column. We're going to call our column Margin, and then tell it what values we would like in that. We're going to take Extended Price, minus extended cost. And apply that to our data set. The result you can see over here on the far right, we now have a new column in our data set for margin. Fundamentally, you're building a catalog friendly to your end users with data that they can understand and use as they build their own visualizations. I could continue by changing the format of these columns, hiding columns, or adding additional calculations. In this case, we'll say we're done and publish our data. Publishing is complete. The next thing we want to do is, for our users, we want to relate these three data sets together so the users don't have to figure that out on their own. So we're going to go to Relate. Here we see our three data sets. I want to connect our customer order lines to our customer orders, which is, of course, connected by the order number itself on each side. The diagram below then shows us how that connection relates. Then we want to take our orders and relate those to our customers. And those, of course, are related by the customer ID. We now have, as a result, 
a catalog with native joins so that your end users don't have to worry about how these data sets relate to each other. Now that we're done, we can move into the exciting part of Burst, which is building visualizations of this data set and dashboards for your users in part two. Here in part two, we're going to take a look at how you and your users can create dashboards and visualizations of the data that you imported and prepared in part one. Now that we've created our data set, imported it, and prepared it for our customer's use, let's go create a dashboard for our end users. This will allow them to create visualizations of the data set. So let's call this our sales analysis dashboard. And let's add a new data element to the board. First thing that's a good practice to do is give this user a key performance indicator, the big number that we're measuring him or her by. So since this is sales, let's say it's total sales. We've created the total sales element. Let's place it prominently in the upper left. And then let's add some additional data. Perhaps we'd like to see sales by month. So we're going to do a columnar report. We're going to bring into that report their total sales. And we're going to measure that month by month. So then let's save and insert that report. We'll call it sales by month. and place it appropriately on our dashboard where we feel it's going to do the most good. Now let's say the user would also like to see a list of specific information. So let's give them a table and in that table we're going to place some attributes. We'll give them the name of the customer, place the order, We'll give them the item that they ordered, and perhaps also the state that they ordered it from. And just for good measure, let's let them see the order number and line number that that order came from. We'll save that report. And we'll insert it on our dashboard. Perhaps the user would like to also see where those sales occurred graphically. So let's give them a new geo map, a report that will show them by region where products have been sold. So again, we'll take that extended price and we'll take the attribute of the state where it was sold and we'll associate that to the United States and save and insert that report. And let's publish our work and see what we've done. So now the user has a dashboard at a glance. They can see the various sales they've made by month, by region, and the detail of those sales. Perhaps they'd also like to see who sold these. So let's go back in and edit this. And let's add a new report. And we're going to make this a donut. And here again, 
we're going to take our total sales, but this time by salesperson. And we'll display the values so we can see the percentage of sales by salesperson. We'll call this sales by salesperson and save that. Here again, let's position it appropriately. One of the features of the dashboard is all of these elements we've placed on it are natively interconnected. So if, for example, the user wanted to be able to see sales for a particular period broken out, they could come in here and highlight, say, just 2016, and all the elements on the dashboard associated with 2016 change. Up on top, they can see what they've selected, in this case, those months of 2016. Perhaps they also only want to see the sales in Connecticut, so they can highlight Connecticut here, and now it changes to just the sales in Connecticut and who sold it. Obviously, Gib is our rep for just the Connecticut area. Once this is all done, you can publish this for just specific users in your environment and share this space or this dashboard with them. If you give them permission, they can change and add their own visualizations. And as you can see, it only takes a little bit of training to learn how to do that. This is the power of Burst, to be able to give your users the data they need at a glance with minimum training and maximum effect. Thank you so much for listening to our presentation.